Sinjuk was the first Korean food to be made with grains. As a decent standalone meal, juk is a major staple, second only to bop, a dish that has shared the long history of the Korean people. Was once considered an inferior food because it was often prepared in difficult times when food was scarce. But today, the image of juk has been reinvented as a healthful, healing food. Today, we explore the culture of juk and its significance in Korean life. Korean food culture sprang from an agricultural society and naturally developed a variety of foods made with grains, like bap and juk. The first Korean dish to be made using grains actually wasn't pap or duck. It was in fact chuk or porridge. And chuk can be made using a variety of ingredients, including grains, vegetables, meats, fish, especially abalone. And chuk can be seen as a different type of dish. It could be a health food, it could be a gourmet treat, it could be an everyday staple, depending on its ingredients and the method of preparation. And today, chuk is generally seen as a well-being dish, a restorative, um, therapeutic, something to get you back on your feet. Let's find out more about chuk. Juke is a semi-liquid food made by mixing basic grains with other ingredients and boiling them for a long time. As numerous as its names, such as Mium, Ongi, and Amjuk, Juke comes in a variety of forms, prepared in a variety of ways. Back in the Neolithic age, juk was made by boiling water and grains in an earthenware pot. Around the year 900, tarak juk made with milk instead of water became popular among the royalty. Many kings in the Joseon dynasty had tarakjuk for breakfast to facilitate digestion in early morning. Then in the 1500s, juk became popular among the masses, and by the 1700s it had become so common that it was sold by peddlers. Many old texts describe the health benefits of juk which is perhaps why juk is a favorite among young children and the elderly even today. So back when milk was hard to come by, Tarakjuk, or milk porridge, it was reserved only for the royalty and the nobility. And this brings to mind a couple of questions. What are the different varieties of juk? What are their various nutritional values? And how are they set on the table? And what is the easiest juk to make? Juk can be divided largely into white juk, made only with rice, vegetable juk, and juk made with fish and meat. Juk comes in many varieties, such as white juk, beef juk, pine nut juk, and spinach juk. It's important to prepare juk according to one's nutritional needs and tastes. 
By 1700, juke had branched into more than 170 varieties. All had different health benefits depending on the ingredients used. Texts from that period describe 10 general benefits of juke, which include better complexion, energy restoration, and a calming effect. Compared to bop, the basic table set with juke is quite simple. There are small bowls with soy sauce, salt, and honey for seasoning, as well as a serving of dongchimi alongside one or two dry side dishes. Today, many busy Koreans have a simple meal of juke for breakfast. The easiest juke to make is the plain hinjuk, which is made with soaked white rice. Ready to be served. Hinjuk is the oldest, the most basic, and also the most widely made juke today. Perfect. In other cuisines and other cultures around the world, you have dishes that are very similar to juke. For example, in China, you have kanji. It's made out of rice as well, but it's a little bit more watery, it's a little thinner. And in the United States, you have oatmeal. Now, in these other cultures, porridge tends to be a little bit more humble, a little bit more utilitarian. Whereas in Korea, you have over 200 types of chuk. One of these types is ojuk, or quite literally, fish porridge. In Korea, juk is not only a breakfast food, but also a health food. Ojuk is made with fish, like snapper and carp, as well as shellfish, such as mussels, clams, and abalone. Naturally, it developed in coastal areas. Every region has its own recipe for ojuk, but one common factor is that the fish should be fresh, with little odor and a clean taste. Korean food culture has always been apt at balancing grains with fish or meat. Ajuk is a great example of that. The fish in ajuk provides protein and essential amino acids, the grains provide carbohydrates, and the vegetables provide vitamins and minerals. The clear waters of the upper Gumgang River around Dokyu Mountain in Muju, North Jola Province, are abundant in freshwater fish, like mandarin fish and catfish. The ojuk made in this region is a traditional food that was enjoyed by fishermen out in the river. The river is Han Wongi's livelihood. It supplies him with the fish he uses at his restaurant. He goes up the river to bring back his nets, now filled with Korean bullhead and mandarin fish. It's spicy and doesn't have a strong odor. The fish kicks up your appetite, so you keep eating more. But it never upsets your stomach. It's now time to make ojuk. The best fish are selected from the latest catch and boiled with ginger until only the bones are left. The broth is poured into another pot, and the bones of the fish are carefully removed. Boil the fish meat and soaked rice in the broth. Add sujebi or flour dough flakes and glass noodles 
and stir. Now add the red pepper paste along with green onions, sesame leaves, and water drop wort to get rid of the fish smell. The juke has to be stirred continuously to keep it from sticking to the pot. And there you have it. The au juk here is characterized by its spicy taste, which makes it perfect for cold and hot days, as well as for curing hangovers. Koreans have long regarded food to be the key to maintaining health. For example, in the summertime, they prefer ojuk, which is low in caloric density but high in nutrition. Whereas in the wintertime, they prefer patjuk, which is a red bean porridge, which helps keep them warm. On Dongji, or winter solstice, Koreans have patjuk made of red beans. Dongji is akin to New Year's Day in Korea. In fact, there is even a saying that you don't get a year older until you have Dongji Patjuk. So on this day, Koreans perform ancestral rites and eat Patjuk with their friends and family. It's said that Dongji Patjuk wards off evil spirits. It's a food that symbolizes the wish to be free of diseases and stay healthy for another year. Today, Pakjuk is popular among many young Koreans. This restaurant in Mapo makes Pakjuk in the traditional way, in a large cauldron. Most of its customers are young Koreans. When making Pakjuk, the most important thing is care. From selecting, washing, and boiling beans, to making glutinous rice balls, and then simmering the juke over low heat to get just the right color. To make pot juke, red beans are boiled until they become soft. Glutinous rice flour and rice flour are added and seasoned with salt. The juke is stirred until everything is mixed well. When it is ready, the pot juke is topped with glutinous rice balls, also known as ongshimi. The soft reddish pot juke is ready. Another popular juke among the young people is pumpkin juke. Young Koreans in particular, they love the reddish patjuk because they could either have it sweet or savory, either way they like. They also love the yellow sweet pumpkin porridge, otherwise known as hobakjuk. Hobakjuk is a healthy vegetable porridge enjoyed by everyone thanks to its appealing color and sweet flavor. It can be readily made at home. Ehobakjuk is popular in spring and summer, when zucchinis are in season. Clam meat is stir-fried with rice and sliced zucchini before adding water. Sometimes, rice and sliced zucchini are boiled in chicken broth instead of water, 
and seasoned with salted shrimp. In late autumn and winter, hobakjuk is the more popular choice. Ripe pumpkin is chopped up and de-seeded before it's boiled for a long time. The cooked pumpkin is mashed and boiled again in water with glutinous rice or red beans and seasoned with salt. This completes a bowl of mouth-watering yellow hobakjuk. Hobakjuk works as a diuretic, reducing swelling in the body. It is also a great diet food because it's rich in fiber. Juke is easy on the stomach and nutritious, perfect for the diets of recovering patients. Juk, which can stand alone as a hearty meal, is popular both as a delicacy and as a health food. It's often served to growing children, the elderly, and patients. Moreover, juk is a perfect food for Koreans, who are highly interested in maintaining good health. Juk can vary either by its ingredients or by its method of preparation. Now, broadly speaking, juk can either help stimulate the appetite, be a part of a diet regimen, or be something that's easy to eat, easy on the stomach while you're feeling unwell. Then there are those chooks that are specially formulated to help you recuperate when you're feeling ill, feeling sick. So that's why sometimes you'll hear when you're having chook as a snack. Are you feeling unwell? Jat juk or pine nut juk is a favorite among patients in recovery. It's made by boiling rice flour and pouring in pine nut water. The juk must be stirred constantly so that the greasy pine nut water does not go bad. Another great healing food for patients is gejuk, made with sesame seeds. A popular variety is the dark hugimjajuk. Hugimjajuk is made with soaked rice and black sesame seeds mixed at a two to one ratio. When Koreans refer to happy, exciting times, they say it's raining sesame seeds, in allusion to their wholesome, pleasant taste. Also, Koreans have always treasured sesame seeds for their three important health effects. Koreans say that eating gejuk often will prevent stroke, graying hair, and worries. It is a claim that is also supported by modern nutritional science. Jakjuk and hugimjajuk are high-calorie foods, which are helpful for people with weak digestive systems. 
jute made only with grains can be a bit bland. So mixing in fish and meat is the best way to bolster both flavor and nutrition. A good example is junbokjuk or abalone juk. Abalone lives on rocks underwater and is rich in protein and minerals that are helpful to recovering patients, new mothers, and growing children. The first junbokjuk was created long ago when the Hainyo of Jeju Island would make juk with abalone intestines after coming up from a dive. This delicacy for female divers evolved into today's junbokjuk, made by boiling stir-fried rice and abalone. The intestines are a crucial ingredient in Jeju junbokjuk and they create a green color and a unique aroma. Many kinds of shellfish are used in juke, including shrimp, oysters, and octopuses. Chicken or beef juke is also widely eaten as a healing food. Chicken juke is a good way to supplement a healthy diet in summer. Chicken and seafood can enrich juke with more flavor and aroma. Juke in Korea is usually vegetarian, made with only rice, or with a variety of grains, fruits, and vegetables. Juke made with fish or meat offer additional protein and a change in flavor. The deeper taste and ample nutrition make it perfect for patients who are recovering. For centuries, Koreans have turned to chuk when they're feeling under the weather, but it can also be had for breakfast, light dinner, even a snack. It's the ultimate comfort food. But whatever the purpose the chuk is to serve, it should be made with the freshest seasonal ingredients and made to your tastes. Juk is a food that is easy to prepare and enjoy. It is made with a variety of ingredients and comes in a rainbow of colors and flavors. Korea's oldest food made with grain, juk is now a staple of the Korean diet and a way to connect with friends and family on special occasions. It is a comfort food for those who have lost their appetite and a healing food that helps others get back on their feet. For Koreans, juk is a wholesome food made with love and care and a food that soothes the pains of the body and mind. 